Good afternoon. The title of my talk is a review of the methodology for identifying pedotide in upland rivers using Fourier and wavelet analyses. And I would like to acknowledge my co-authors, Dr. Hintz and Dr. Rosenquist. Why define the head of tide? Finding ways to identify the head of tide in Georgia is important for defining the state definition of tidal influence in the rivers. The Protection of Tidewaters Act specifies that the head of tide is the location of river where tidal range is greater than 0.2 feet. We want to know how the head of tide moves with upland flooding and how long does the tidal range need to be greater than 0.2 feet for it to fall under the Protection of Tidewaters Act legislation. Defining head of tide and examining how river stage interacts with tide is important for predictive flood mapping and emergency planning. Flood zones could potentially be re redefined. Protecting tidally influenced waters from development is also an important aspect. And finally, climate change leads to higher sea levels, potentially causing the head of tide to move further inland in the future. How do we define the head of tide? Hobo pressure sensors collect absolute pressure that is later converted to water levels. These sensors have been deployed on the Savannah, Ogeechee, and Altamaha rivers so far. The sensors feature a 0.1% water level measurement accuracy, a raw pressure accuracy of 0.09 psi, and operates between a range of 0 to 9 meters of water. Stilling wells are used to shelter the sensors. So far, six HOA sensors have been deployed along the Savannah River from River Mile 35 to River Mile 51. USGS gauges provide stage and atmospheric pressure data. Hobo pressure transducers provide atmospheric pressure plus water pressure. A correction is later applied to remove atmospheric pressure so only water pressure values are given. Six pressure sensors have also been installed along the Ogeechee starting from River Mile 40 and expanding to River Mile 51. Six sensors have been placed in the Altima Hall from the range of River Mile 24 to River Mile 40. LTER sites are also downriver on the Altima Hall and provide salinity and water depth using deployed pressure sensors. Here are some examples of sensors deployed on the rivers. What is Fourier analysis? Fourier analysis helps identify the existence and size of certain frequency components. Frequency and period are inversely related. Tides have well-established harmonic periods. A 12.42 hour period is identifiable as the principal lunar sem semi-diurnal harmonic component associated with tidal periods. Fourier analysis can identify this period and denote that there is a tidal influence at the given site. However, Fourier analysis requires large data sets to operate well. A minimum of six months of data needs to be collected if the data was collected at 15 minute intervals. Figure 1 shows raw data and how water level changed over a period of 68 days at River Mile 45. Figure 2 shows that the principal lunar semi-diurnal component occurs at a period of 12.42 hours. The green circle points on the graph indicate a tidal influence at the USGS gauge in Everett City on the Altamaha River. For there to be tidal indication, the spectral intensity must be three standard deviations above the local noise. Here is the principal lunar semi-diurnal component that occurs at a period of 12.42 hours that we really look for in determining tidal presence. What is wavelet analysis? Wavelet analysis uses waveform and wavelength matching and best fit to identify tidally influenced waves. This analysis evaluates and finds individual waves based on best matches closest to tidally influenced waves. Wavelet analysis is based on the following equation. Also, here we have a graph wave graph for the series of waveforms. From the equation, H is the waveform height that the current waveforms are being tested against. I is the current wave height. J is the current wave period. L is the measurement location of the waveform being tested. 
Okay, here's the current location of the time series at the wave peak. And TSK is the current river stage. Here are some results of wavelet analysis for USGS data at Everett City on the Altima Hall. The left column of numbers represents hours, while the top row represents tidal range and feet. There are many matches at the period of 12 hours due to tidal period being around 12.42 hours. 5,420 matches out of 5,624 indicate strong tidal influence at this site. Fourier analysis looks at larger sets of data as a whole and can separate regular tidal events and episodic tidal events such as flooding or spring neat tides. Wavelet analysis looks at shorter sets of data, evaluates individual waveforms, and can distinguish between normal tidal events and episodic tidal events. What is moving mean analysis? Moving mean is a series of means of different subsets of the full data. It smooths out data to make trends more obvious. Anything out of the range of plus or minus 0.1 feet of the moving mean indicates tidal influence. Referring to the graph, the moving mean is the middle light blue line, and the light blue lines above and below the moving mean line are the 0.1 foot above and below the moving mean. The yellow is a precursory identification of the river stage exceeding the head of tide that is determined by the moving mean method. The data collected from the river gauge indicates a strong semi-diurnal tidal influence in this area. Note, however, that the moving mean is influenced by strong tidal conditions. This method may not be the most precise to analyze tidal presence, but the large tidal amplitude demonstrates that identifying tidal presence does not have to be precise here. This river gauge station data here indicates that upland river flooding is occurring over time and that the tidal presence has been weakened. Tidal presence decreases during this week as it indicated by the graph. The river stage quickly increased and decreased at this site. This method needs to be further researched in terms of the automatic detection of the tidal presence because of this example. The rapid flooding and rapid decrease of stage created a false precursory identification of tidal presence. The moving mean method works well in conjunction with the Fourier and wavelet analysis, but needs further research on tidal presence automatic detection. All three analyses have their ups and downs. Fourier analysis is better with large data sets, while wavelet analysis is able to use short data sets. Large data sets are heavy and extensive for wavelet analysis, however. A con of Fourier analysis is that it does not tell what time in which the frequency components occur. However, that is not as much as a big deal because we do not need to know exactly what time they occur for tidal presence. The moving mean identifies tide during minor upland flooding events and can identify at what stage tidal presence disappears. However, after, after a certain stage of about four feet, it is more difficult to use the moving mean analysis. Each analysis brings some aspect to identifying the head of tide that another may not supply. This is a summary visual of the capabilities of each. I am thankful to have been able to present this methodology of the head of tide identification at the Georgia Water Resources Conference. Thank you for your time.